If you want to be free, you got to be an outsider. You notice how in some families, all families really, there's one or two of the kids who just don't fit in. They're there. They know it's daddy and mama. They know it's their brothers and sisters. But a little something that causes them to not fit in, don't go along with everything, and then they're hated by mama. And mama make the brothers and sisters hate them, hate that one child or the two kids who just don't fit in. And you feel like something is wrong here. I'm in this family, but I don't belong to it. While growing up, and then you get older, you move away, and then you realize, oh, that's why I didn't fit in. You don't want to fit in. You want to be an individual. And standing alone is not easy if you're not ready to endure it. And that's what it feels like, too, when you're, this is spiritual, right? When you're dying from the not you, the ego nature, the thoughts and pains become, as A.J. was saying this morning, I believe A.J., the thoughts and pains become overwhelming, and you want to give up. You want to go home. But you don't. You don't. You can't. This is why the great white hope is hated because he is a perfect example of why black people believe that white people are superior to them. Not all, not all, not all, but most believe that. And that's why they call the white man Mr. White Supremacy. I need a job so I can do this, Mr. White Man. I can't build my own job. My own company? What the? I ain't got no money. Oh, I got money to buy drugs. Everybody on drugs. Except baby Jessica's daddy. But they ain't got no money. In the good old days when boys were boys and men were men, black men didn't need. And we were taught. I was taught. We were taught. If someone don't want you at their house, they have a right not to want you there. What the? Don't be mad at someone they don't want you at their own home. Someone don't want you this or that. You can do your own thing. If they can do it, you can do it. You can have your own business. You can have whatever you want if you just go out and do it. And so they taught us to work and not have a victimhood mentality, no matter what you have to go through. And when I first moved to L.A., I went through hell. Just imagine moving from a plantation in Alabama, sweet home Alabama, to a big city like Los Angeles. Like, what the? You've not heard of a lot of stuff that was happening and situations that you could get into. But I never felt like a victim. I didn't know victimhood. I didn't know that word. Because I was trained, I was taught. By example, and when growing up, you can do it on your own. They didn't say, white man is superior to you. You got to get a job from him so you can make it. Let me update you on the Trump situation, the great white hope. Oh, let me see what he has to say. I know. Lord, let me see what the president got to say. From this day forward, it's going to be only America first. Deep. Absolute deep. Here's the update. Here's some of the footage from the, uh, yesterday they had the, the little hearing in New York about the Great White Hope, so-called. And there were people there protesting on um, uh, both sides, for the president and against. Here's some of the footage from the New York protests yesterday, a compilation of it. Stop ever with me! Sorry! What's wrong with you, bro? You're picturing me like an idiot. I will kill your Kill! We will never accept hateful rhetoric in our city. Any rhetoric that is divisive, any rhetoric that uplifts white supremacy, we are pushing back against that 
in all his forms. Marjorie Taylor Greene needs to take her back to Washington. What crimes did Donald Trump commit to get him here today? Um, all of them. What specifically did he commit today? What crime did Donald Trump commit to get him here today? We don't know. You don't know? We, we do not know. As far as my knowledge, he paid someone money to hush money. The felony is related to the fact that these business expenses were falsified. Hmm. <laughs> What's the felony that he's being charged with exactly, actually? His lawyer has already been proven guilty. It actually was covering up for him. You think so? Yes. Where's the proof? The proof is in the pudding. If you lose this country, there is no other place to go. You are being indoctrinated by the Democrats and the radical left. And that party is the evil party. They want to destroy the family. They don't believe in God. They don't believe in the country. They believe in the welfare system. <laughs> Remember I told you a while back in our fellowship service that I didn't know this, but I realized that when people protest, they have no idea why they are protesting really on both sides. You ask them why, they don't know. But because they're sheeps, emotional sheeps, and emotional people are weak, you can control them with your emotions. Emotional people are weak, they're just out there. They don't know why. Their leaders, physical leaders, tell them, you got to come protest. They did this. Oh, okay, I'll be there. They have no clue as to why, because they are divided. And anyone who is divided within, you will be divided without. But if you're whole within, you will be whole without. Isn't that something? So no people don't even know why they are doing it. But they are fighting, they are angry, they are being controlled, and don't know it. Wake up, America. This little black guy, Alvin Bragg, he held a press conference after the little hearing they had about the Great White Hope. Watch this. This, this case Twitter. today is one with allegations like so many of our white collar cases. Under New York state law, it is a felony to falsify business records with intent to defraud and an intent to conceal another crime. That is exactly what this case is about. 34 false statements made to cover up other crimes. These are felony crimes in New York State. No matter who you are, we cannot and will not normalize serious criminal conduct. We will not, will not, cannot, will not normalize crime. You heard that, right? And he never said what the great white hope crime is or was. So they won't normalize crime. But guess what? According to Breitbart, in 2022, violent crime in New York City rose 23%. Violent crime in New York City rose 23%, with more than 126,500 arrests made for murder. Ooh, can you imagine that? But we ain't going to tolerate it. Not going to normalize it. 1,026, 126,500 arrests made for murder alone. Robbery, assault, mo robbery, assault, rape, and burglary. 126,500 arrests made for murder, robbery, assault, rape, and burglary. But we ain't gonna talk about Donald Trump. What the? Here's some footage from Alvin Bragg's New York. This is from Fox 5. Watch this. Say one shot every five seconds, and uh, people were screaming, and I just saw people running. The NYPD released new surveillance video of the suspect as he opened fire on Saratoga Avenue and Prospect Place. Now go to the Upper West Side in Manhattan, 
where a teenager ran inside a high school after he was shot a couple of blocks away. It was one of three separate shootings that happened within a five-hour span. According to investigators, a 15-year-old victim was approached by a group of teens on the train. They pulled him off the train and onto the platform where he was beaten and called racial slurs. Police also need your help. They're searching for four suspects accused of attacking and robbing a 13-year-old boy on Staten Island. The shoplifting concerns are part of a growing trend in the city. A New York Post analysis of police data found that shoplifting complaints during 2022 were up by 45 percent over 2021. Black the NYPD excellent. made more than 22,000 arrests last year, but due to current laws, many of those arrested were released back on the streets to do it again. But we ain't going to tolerate no crime here. Not from the white man. We love black excellent crime. Black excellent. Did you see the slaves running after stealing the merchandise? <laughs> the slave is on the run. I wonder what they're being saved by the Underground Railroad thing. Mahala Jackson or whatever her name was. Huh? Harriet Tubman, I think. Oh. Harriet, not Mahaley. Mahaley Jackson. <laughs> I think Mahaley, oh, no, I don't know. I should say I think she was a Republican. I could be wrong. But anyway, that's black excellent. That's due to slavery. Even though the slave didn't do it, their ancestors are doing it. Even though the slaves were decent people, their ancestors turned out to be hell. Black excellent, underrun, after stealing white man stuff. We need the white man to give us a job. We need the white man to give us affirmative action so we can have some money so we can do something. Yes, sir, Mr. Boss. Fisher Hood is a rough neighborhood to hang out in. <laughs> what the? I like that saying. So here's Trump's speech. He gave a talk after he went back home after a little hearing. He went back to Florida, the, the great white hope did. And by the way, my producer, Sean, put this package together. It's amazing. And he white. He white. This is Trump's speech. Highlights from Trump's speech at Mar-a-Lago. The only crime Trump, that uh, I have committed is to fearlessly defend our nation from those who seek to destroy it. This fake case was brought only to interfere with the upcoming 2024 election, and it should be dropped immediately. As it turns out, virtually everybody that has looked at this case, including rhinos and even hardcore Democrats, say there is no crime. Meanwhile, overall, crime in New York was up 30 percent last year, much more than that the year before, with felony assaults, robberies, and burglaries all up by Massive, massive numbers. Saudi Arabia has joined with Iran. China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea have formed together as a menacing and destructive coalition. Our currency is crashing and will soon no longer be the world standard, which will be our greatest defeat, frankly, in 200 years. With all of this being said, and with a very dark cloud over our beloved country. I have no doubt, nevertheless, that we will make America great again. Amazing. Senator man, there's a dark cloud arising. Let's go home. Senator man, there's a dark cloud rising. Let's go home. There's a dark Cloud rising, let's go home. Can't you see that lightning striking? Hear that stunt, thunder rolling. There's a dark cloud rising, let's go home. It's a dark cloud over America today. The one thing, I don't know what the outcome going to be with the great white hope, of course. But the one thing I admire, as I did when I was a kid, that he's not overreacting. He's not afraid. He's not a victim. 
he is not, he's dealing with life. Look how calm he is. When you overcome anger, you'll understand that nature. That's the natural nature, the normal nature, not the abnormal nature. Abnormal nature is to overreact to situations in life, to blame, to become a victim, to be scared. I was just so scared. And a normal nature, which is of God, by the way, abnormal nature is of your daddy, the devil. Normal nature is of God, and that is not to react. Satan wants you to overreact so he can control you. God wants you to be still so he can control you. Which will you do? Donald Trump, let him be an example in a big way how to deal with the issues in life. If you watch and don't idolize him, but watch him, but do not idolize him, you will learn. That's what Christ did. Christ did not overreact to the issues of life because he knew that they were of the devil. And, you know, argue with the devil. He wants you to. You don't give in to the temptations of the devil in the mind. The accuser, he accuses you and condemns you within yourself and outside of you, inside of others. But that's the devil. Why give room to the devil? So, I, again, I don't know what, how this whole thing is going to end. I have a way to see attitude about it, but I am observing what's happening. I'm observing the attacks upon the great white hope and how he's dealing with the attacks. I'm not idolizing him. So I have no reason to ever be to hate him. And even if he said or did something that he did or said, it would have nothing to do with me, and I still would not hate him because I'm not idolizing him. Observe the man. Don't freak out with what's happening to the man. It's happening to him, by the way, and not happening to you. You got your own happenings. But observe. Wish him well. He's what America need right now, the example that America need. And in the good old days, black and white men were this way. For the most part, he has some weak ones, not to do with every generation, but most were strong like that. Most were strong like that. So let that be your example. It's manhood. I will learn from the man by observing the man.